of our hike. Um, we have approximately 11 miles to the last fort. There isn't any wall through here because it's been taken down to put in the uh, motorway for cars. So we'll be doing probably a lot of asphalt today. That's okay. That'll make the miles go fast. Anyways, we've got another nice day. It's supposed to be about 64 today. Um, had a nice stay at Kilman's Lodge. There was a microbrewery there. We had dinner last night, breakfast this morning. People were nice. Oh, and we were pleasantly surprised. We each got our own room today with a big bed. And as much as I have been enjoying Lynn's company, it was nice to have my own room for last night. And yeah. So here we go. There's boats and um, rowboats out here on the water, probably practicing for some races. Is this four? Part four. Okay. Of uh, things you should know. Here's a good one example. <laughs> Mud. So I was telling Susie, one of the big debates we had, the three of us, which would be me, Susie, and Jane, was should we bring a pole? We had seen a lot of video and commentary with and read a lot back and forth issues with the pole. Should you have it? Should you not? Anyways, I came up with my own theory. <laughs> if you're a novice super hiker, I don't feel you would need a pole for this hike. No, novice is a new person. Oh, novice? What's a rookie? Advanced hiker. Oh, I thought it was opposite. I thought a rookie was new and a novice was... A, a rookie, well, a rookie and a novice is kind of the same thing. Okay. So but scratch it, that. If you're a super hiker, very agile, done it from, and very fast, you wouldn't need a pole for this. If you're a hiker like Suze, me, Jane, a pole was, one pole was good enough, very useful because there are some areas that are super muddy. We did cross a creek where you could only get over stepping on small stones and the pole came in handy to keep your balance. Uh, going up some of those really narrow walkways, steps, stone steps, going up the mountainside, the one pole helped me keep my balance. And if you're more of an elderly, because we've seen a lot of older people on the trail, and you're not super balanced, two poles would be great. We've seen a lot of elderly hikers with two poles. So that's my take on it. Anything to add, Suze? Yes, if you could bring a collapsible pole that will fit in your suitcase because they don't let you take hiking poles on the airlines. Yeah. The airplanes. Yep. So that's what we brought. And as I said, it came very handy one pole for us. So if you're a super hiker, probably not need a pole. Average hiker like us, one pole an elderly hiker. And the terrain is not flat, it's very lumpy because a lot of the pastures, the cows just tear up the 
the field. So you're walking on uneven terrain. Okay. See, here's some more mud as an example. showing you this beautiful trail. Uh, number five, shoes. Low tops or high tops, whichever are your preference, are good, but what I did before I came here was I bought some waterproof Solomon low top shoes. And um, they're pretty much like my regular ones but I decided to get waterproof because I was expecting rain and so on. And I didn't want my feet to get wet if I could help it. And even though we haven't had rain, we have stepped in some bogs where my, the top of my feet are getting water on top of them. But the water hasn't penetrated, which is good. So, I, and Lynn's got high tops, but she's got waterproof high tops. So my suggestion is waterproof. Anyways, up we go. bikes on the trail today more so than usual because we're coming into a big city and Lynn and I were walking down this smaller bike path than this and this guy comes up behind us scares the heck out of us because we thought there was uh, something coming out of the bushes and it was a bike coming by us didn't honk the horn, didn't say on your left, nothing. Scared the crap out of us. So you're gonna have to be careful with the bikes because people, some people use their bells, most people don't. And if you don't hear them talking before they come up on you, you're gonna get scared. Anyways, we finally made it to Newcastle. Been walking six miles. Two hours and 45 minutes. We just got finished with a little break at a little Italian place, had a soda. So, Probably were there 20, 25 minutes. Anyways, nice little break. Yeah, we needed to use the bathroom, so we had to buy a soda so we could use the bathroom. This is the River Tyne. As you can see, the water's way down. let's talk about money so when we got to the airport we went and found in Liverpool actually at the mall we found money so we went and got some pounds so because they said you should have some cash just in case some people don't take credit cards so yeah you will need to carry some pounds um, we used it for taxis, sometimes when you just need to get a drink or something, something like that, small stuff. At the um, bed and breakfasts, sometimes you have to pay for things, 
and some of them take credit cards some of them take cash so it's always good to have enough cash with you um, I started making sure I had a coin as well they're called pence to make sure that if we were getting rides taxi uh, drivers if you like to tip then you could tip your driver or whoever so I've been trying to carry we're getting closer we just saw a sign that said six more miles to go we've already gone 7.3 do you see a pattern here? I was just looking for the word pattern. Yep, every day the mileage has always been higher than listed in the guidebooks that we have. And so I'm gonna say that probably has been the reason, cute little, here. The reason that I've struggled with this, because when you think you're only doing 15 miles and at the end of the day you still have two miles to go, that just does your head in. Won't you agree? Patty, I think you could agree with that. Anyway, it is what it is. Six more miles to go. So we veered off the trail to come find the train station. Because we have to get our tickets for tomorrow to go to London. And to go back and forth from... Um, Tynemouth, where we're staying tonight. Beautiful. Is the train station up that way? You yes, want to go, go up to the, um, go up to the lights, turn left. Okay. Or, or go up there go up and turn way. left and right. Yeah. yeah, that's probably quicker actually. That's, that's deep. Okay, so turn go right. Turn left, see whether traffic is up there. Yes. Turn left. Okay. And then you'll come to see the traffic lights and turn right. Turn right. It takes you along by the railway arches. Okay, great. And it'll be like a curve. Okay. Like right to lefty. And so, get there. so we'll get the train from Newcastle to London and also we can get the metro to Tynemouth yes. from there. Okay, thank you.